Hey dear team, and welcome back to the channel, and <laughs> welcome back to some Kerbal Space Program, KSP. It seems to have been well received. Um, and I did get some comments of, of fellow idiots, uh, you know, be welcome, feel at home team. I'm glad that, that I can, um, you know, help at our level, help show the other, you know, the other bloody caveman how to make fire, or at least bang sticks together and rocks together. Okay, so, where were we? We, we fucking speared our rocket directly into Terra. Probably not uh, the best move, but we, we we beat some missions, you know. Open. Uh, let's open old Gronk 2. Point. Oh my god, yeah. I need to come up with a labeling system, but okay, whatever. Whatever. How are we looking for missions? Test the parachute. Yeah, we've got this one again. Now we wanted to do the hammer. Solid fuel booster. One other thing I'm curious about. Is it, is it going to infinitely feed me low-level missions? Or when I dry them up, is that going to be it? I don't know. In fact, maybe this is a good opportunity to... We'll make something a little bit more complex. Put a coupler on that. Put a small booster on it. Boost, decouple. Flying. Test the parachute. I don't, I don't like this jewel. Let's fix that. And maybe actually save it this time, Scarlet. Alright, that's kind of cool. Um, whatever, just save that. Perfect. Let's go. Let's just do the parachute. And then we'll go to the mission thing and we'll see if it sort of feeds us the same one. That's I want to understand the rhythm of the missions because I'm hoping as you dry up the, the piss easy ones, it starts to take them off you and sort of forces you bigger and better. Because if we do that, now we've got a progress sort of uh, arch, right? Uh, I don't know. It's an idea. Altitude, 3,000 meters. I guess we could use this and it'll tell us. Apparently we're going to make it to... 40, we're going too fast. Let's disconnect. 150 meters per second. Oh, we're going to just make it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Done. Perfect. Let's turn all that off. Let's speed it up. Jesus Christ. I hope you did your G-Force training, mate. Look at him, he's having a great time. People pay for this sort of experience on roller coasters. For this dude, it's just a Tuesday. Alright. Well, that, well, that worked out well, didn't it? What a cool game. It's cool to see everyone getting excited, you know, people rallying around. The sweats and noobs alike. Kerbal 2 is going to be pretty wild. This is a pretty good time to segue into it, I would say. Alright, next. Oh yeah, I didn't take any science, but probably wouldn't have really gotten anything either. Alright, mission control. Let's see, we want ones that give us science. There's one here. Test the thud liquid engine. Okay, sure. I mean, let's take it. Archives. Here we go, look at this. Oh, those missions are identical. They have different flavor ticks. I told you I've tested the parachute before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is this is a little bit frustrating because, you know, like, mm, it's not a lot of science. I don't like that. I really don't like that it's just got this feedback loop, right? Where it's it's potentially just going to keep giving us the same shit mission. Unless that's a bug? Why would it give us the same test twice? Has it given us the same test for anything else? So there's your thud liquid f fuel engine. Q 
because now we're sort of being incentivized, I guess. Because it makes sense if they're money contracts, you know, let's just do small little contracts to get money because we're running flat. Sure. But that's not how science works, right? So. However, let me see. Maybe I don't have the tech to do something like orbit curve and then you chip away at the lower end to get the science to be able to get the equipment to orbit curve and hmm. All tests. Escape the atmosphere. We might just do that. 70,000 meters is breach. Right? We're not going to get there on this. So let's... Let's see how this goes. I don't know, let's, let's come up with a name for this as well. Let's call it Atmo. Atmo 1. Because that's what this thing's purview is. It's to breach atmosphere. That's the, that's the point of this vessel. Yeah. Atmo 1. Alright, let's just, if we get this, this should give us a bit of an early idea of, you can see, achieve goal. Breach the atmosphere by flying a vessel for, to an altitude of 70,000 meters to achieve this goal. Alright, well, off we go. See now, our apoapsis will predict the, uh, the top, the highermost point of our orbital path there you go we're going to breach at this point now we don't have enough of a, a vector or with the curvature of the planet so while we will in fact go above atmosphere oh hang on it's starting to slow Let's drop some weight. See if that helps. 70. We're only at 35 there. Oh no, look, the decimal slow rate is... Shit, it's, oh, it's gonna be so close. But we might have this. 70, I'm looking at the bottom left, Apoapsis readout, 70.6, yeah, look, it's, it's, yeah, there we go, we've done it, escape the atmosphere, perfect, but like I said, we're not running with the curvature, what you need is a rotational speed of something, something in the, in the neighborhood of 2,000 meters per second, right, and I think you'll find that, is that how it works? Oh, they took the music off us because we've dropped back below 70. Um, I think this, one of these, orbit, orbit makes sense. That's sort of my, my speed relative to the planet, right? You see the planet's curving underneath us. It's rotating. That's sort of why we're traveling this way. So we are speeding up, but what you, what you need is... The, the secret ingredient to orbit with any planetoid is to be able to clear the atmosphere so you don't have a wind resistance component. That's why 70,000 matters, right? So if we pull back in here, you can see we're just inside the thin layer of atmosphere. You've got different layers here, and it's gradual, even though they're measuring it in blocks. The, the density thins as it goes higher, right? But at 70,000, you're beyond wind resistance. Okay, that's great. However, you still need to think of it as perpetually tumbling, right? Um, you need to be perpetually tumbling in concert with the planet. 
And if you can get that tumbling sort of rotational velocity up to about, I think it's about 2000, it might be 2400. I can't actually remember specifically, but they're the numbers in my mind. If you can actually get your tumble uh, rotational vector to be like that, the idea is that your ship will continue to perpetually fall around the planet. That's how, that's what orbit is. Is just perpetually tumbling. It's the biggest bait, the biggest sort of cock tease, is that your thing's trying to fall down to the planet, but because you're rotating so fast, you're constantly tumbling down to the planet, but you're doing it at such a, such a sort of orthogonal, would that be the right term? Because it's not, it's curvature, so that's not really correct. Your vector is against the curve in such a way that you'll just never, ever land on the planet, but you'll can constantly tumble towards it at a ridiculous speed. That's what orbit is. It's very strange. And then that's why wind resistance comes into it, because let's say, say you did it inside with a little bit of drag, right? We don't have this sort of vacuum closed system with no resistance. Essentially, the drag is a, is a constant uh, sort of force against your vector and it will slow your rotational vector over time and then you'll slow down and then your orbit will degrade. This is as I understand it from one idiot to another, right? Um, I'm no expert. But there's all sorts of weird mechanical systems that come in and there's one thing that I think not a lot of people leverage quite as much because I don't even think a lot of them know about it. And I don't know what the formal idea is, but if you build your rocket and you can put your rocket into a controlled tumble when it's taking off and what it will actually do, it will find the, the most efficient line of uh, like a rotational vector as it goes. If you get your thrust and all that right as well. So you give it enough room to start falling while you're pushing up to, to your destination. It's very tricky, but I think it's kind of magic because if you can nail it, then it, the ship steers itself. Anyway, so that's exciting. We kind of did a big mission there. Um, okay, what's this one here? I mean, let's let's just take this one, shall we? Um, and we got some serious bank out of that as well. All right, well, um, research. Oh my God, research out the wazoo too. Stability. Well, we had a look at this. The radial decoupler is king. That's what we really want from that upgrade. Fourteen. And we're getting into the forty-five region. Basic science. All this. Cool. All right, we can't afford any of that. That's okay. No stress. We're figuring it out. We might go for the big boy now. We might start going for the big boy. Right? You know what I'm saying. You know of what I speak. Orbit Kerbin. Fly a vessel up and out of the atmosphere, 70,000, and accelerate parallel with the surface until you're in a stable orbit to achieve this goal. Right? Pretty cool. So the real, I don't exactly have like, it'd be cool if I had a notepad or something like that. So the efficiency comes from, as we take off, curving on on the way up, right? Consider the other side, the, the brute force side would be fire straight up to 70,000, then turn right angles and then fire and then try and get that vector going. However, in order to do that, you would have to carry a fuckload of fuel up to 70,000 uh, kilometers, which in turn is going to require a fuckload of fuel to get that that high, right? So if you, you want to sort of harness this pseudo tumble, at least this is my theory, as you take off, you can force a curve. Um, anyway. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, cool. So let's call this... I don't know, Orbit 1. It's not very inventive, but an idiot like me will probably remember what this means. Maybe, big maybe, Scarlet. So that actually got us, this got us all the way to 70,000. 
straight up though. All right. Now, if we if we're going to hit this at an angle, trying to get a curved uh, what, what would you call it? A, a curved ve vector, a rotational vector. We're going to spend more time in denser atmosphere. There's going to be more drag. There's going to just be more time spent there, which means we're going to need more thrust, right? If this thrust got us to 70,000 straight up, there's no way, not in a million years, is it going to get us around this sort of curve. Um, so what we could do is... I like the idea of staging, like hardcore staging and having really anal granular components to it. Um, like I look at this inefficient little booster and I see magic. That's what I see. Everyone sees something different. So pe most people see this as trash and they want to get rid of it as soon as possible. And I go, no, I like this a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to put three little stages. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a flight program for each stage. Can I recolor you guys? Oh, I like that. Color you down the bottom. Nice. All right. Bang. Disconnect. We'll be, you know, we'll be anal for the moment, but you can actually combine some of these in. So you could probably put these two together. So when this disconnects the old thruster, it auto fires the next thruster. For the moment, I'm happy just having a bazillion different stages. We just got to make sure that they're in the correct order, all right? Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So what I'm trying to do is do this in, in a small rigid segments and almost write a flight plan to to handle that, right? Um, that doesn't make sense. Uh, to, to sort of, that I could follow it. I could, you know, reinstall this game years later and go, oh, I'll just follow my little flight plan and she'll be right. So if we, like, consider, not that I'm trying to teach physics here, but if, if you fire straight up, you will not come straight down, right? You'll go up, but as you go up on that vector, the planet's going to rotate underneath, so you're going to actually travel relatively across. But if you tip the, the nose of your rocket as well, it will start to create a rotational component to the physics applied uh, on the rocket, right? And that's what I'm saying. So consider, like, the exaggerated version would be, like, spinning like this, like this, twirling, right? Except we're not going to go that far, but think that way. Think that that force is what's being applied. So let's say instead of, you know, gentler and gentler, so bigger spins, bigger twirls like this, all right, all the way until it doesn't twirl, until we're in so big a twirl of the rocket trying to do this that it actually ends up trying to do it infinitely, right? And the, the cool thing about doing that is it will find its own line, like the, the most efficient vector through the atmosphere it's just doing it is fucked <laughs> the manufacturing this is very trial and error heavy so what we'll probably do is i have to get my 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 bearings right because you can nudge the ship a little the other thing is and this is sacrilegious for some if you turn you have to turn sass off for something like this to work as soon as he starts uh, interfering and trying to keep it, because uh, let me just show you real quick, right? If I do SAS, see this, this is sort of our heading that we want to go to. And if I turn that to there, he will do his best. See that? See, I'm hands off now. So I'll turn around like that. I turn to that. He will do his best to keep that heading. He will lock to that heading. So right now we might have forces. If I turn SAS off, actually, can see it starts to lose control there you go interestingly though it's steadied out right that's actually a pretty good example of what i'm trying to do the vessel wants to find an efficient line because it's like all things you know it, it wants to take the laziest way out uh, revert flight to launch 
So my thesis is, my proposal is to gently nudge it enough at each of these stages for it to find the line, all right? Now, what's probably gonna happen is I'm not gonna have the correct amount of thrust, so it will, um, it will under thrust, and so that it will start tumbling, all right? But that's part of the trial and error, all right? So for the first stage, we just hands off, hands off, but we might, we might give it a bump for the second stage. This is gonna be very trial and error. See, okay, so you can see here already. Look at that, it's curving out. Oh, and look at that, it's steadied out. I haven't touched anything yet, other than staging. Do you see this? It's, you know what this is actually? I, I believe this is how arrows work. And see, that's a problem. That's a pain in the ass. But the theory is sound. Okay. That was actually, that worked a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, I th you know, I, I hope I'm visually getting across what I'm trying to convey. Again, I don't have an orbital mechanicals, mechanics background. I have an engineering background, but absolutely more maritime. Very different. <laughs> Very different. Um, fluid dynamics, yeah. I mean, I guess there's a comparison to be had in there somewhere. So my immediate thing is I, we need to think back to front as well, right? Once we do get up into the atmosphere, um, or out of the atmosphere, we're, we're gonna want a fuel tank. I guess we could put a decoupler there. We were to try for re-entry. We're gonna want a fuel tank and a fuel engine. Now, above sea level versus vacuum. Vacuum efficiency 215 newtons, 60 kilonewtons, 240. So this is more designed, well that's just more powerful, full stop. The Reliant, and this is the Swivel. Slightly smaller and heavier engine in comparison to the other models. It's thrust vectoring feature can deflect its thrust to aid in craft control. Let's try that one. If this one's more for maneuvering, because that's the point of this for us, is this is final maneuvering to get us into orbit. That's what it is. This is fine tuning. This engine doesn't just dumb fire. You can throttle up and throttle down and you can sort of steer. So you could use this to, to gently nudge yourself up or down. It's, a, it's, it's an error corrector. That's what it is, right? That's not a term, but but if I say that, I'm sure you understand what I mean, right? So we're gonna do something like that. Orbit one, point one, that'll do. I guess that's pseudo, like it's not a major update, but it's it's major versioning, right? We've added a, st a, a significant stage to it. going on here. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Honestly though, if I can have it as smooth as possible, put this there. Especially the fact that I was able to fire these sections without having to adjust myself, that was pretty awesome. I wonder if I could fine tune, because you can change the thrust limiter and the fuel amount. I might actually be able to make a totally hands-off launcher. Though it's, its usage will be limited because, like I'd love the idea of having a footprint that you could then, you could change the payload, like if you wanted to launch something hands-off. But the problem is as soon as you change the weight of the payload, it will change everything. And I don't I don't know if this game even gives you the ability to do the math to support any of that sort of, like it's not like I can create a projection 
you can you can look at um, this right thrust to weight ratios and all that sort of stuff. I mean, let me think about this for just a second. Burn rate thrust to weight ratio. Hypothetically, if I got this to work perfectly in X in X things, and then I recorded for each, say there was five stages, and stage one was exactly this, let's say, nine second burn, a 2.07 thrust to weight, right? And then I changed the payload, but then I changed this first stage. Maybe it needs, well, it would need more fuel and more thrust. Maybe I change the booster entirely, but I make it 2.07 and nine seconds. Surely that's just scaling up the vessel. You could make the vessel twice the size, three times the size, but if you kept all the stages of the hypothetical perfect system intact, then it should work, right? Hmm. So all I need to do is find the numbers to do this hands off. Scarlet, what are you talking about? We have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. That's right, I do. And I guess that's really all that matters. I wonder, can you do auto-staging? If you could do auto-staging, that would be king here. See, yeah, that, that little moment where I take my hand off, I don't, I don't love that. All right, so see, and here you would thrust up, you know? Thrust down. Revert flight to VAB. Why does my mind go up here? Crew cargo. Switch editor. No, no, no. That takes us to a different editor. If if you know anything about auto, I swear there's a way to auto stage. Chuck me a comment. Point me in the right direction. I don't want to get too dug into it right now. But for the moment... Now what we're actually, what we're going to run into here is part limit. So there is the gamey component that um, that the launch pad, we might actually be able to find it down here. Parts, 17 out of 30. The launch pad is actually gonna hit a ceiling on part limits. And I think perhaps weight as well, mass. I mean, we're not there yet. And I think 1.1 is fine. We changed the liquid fuel component, but adding all these stages, you know what we could do? We could go 1.1.1. That makes sense. All right, that sort of versioning. I like that. Or 01, whatever. This will do for the moment. And you can probably pull this up. This is starting to really hurt our thrust to weight because I'm obviously adding even more weight on top of the stages. You see what I mean? It's got a built in tumble. However, we might actually be thrusting too straight up. That'll be an interesting issue for us to overcome. Yeah, see. Probably have to come up with a something there. Okay. And if I have a look at the map. This apoaps is only twenty kilometers. It's nothing. I feel. I still think the theory is sound. If not outlandish, this is how my brain works. Unconventional. I 
I mean, someone might type something revelatory in the comments and point out why what I'm doing won't work. But for the moment, now I think you sh your rocket can become unsteady on the launch pad. So we've got to be careful of that. What I call it one? I should have called it zero one. All right, well, we'll call it this. We'll point one one. And then we'll go one two one three as I as I tweak these systems here. Now, if it starts falling over, we, you know, we'll have to address that. But I suppose if we're fast about it. Oh. Oh, what happened there? I fucked my uh, staging. See? You could tell. You could feel it. That's why we really need the auto staging now, because that tiny little gap in between is so critical. Uh, maybe I'm just imagining things, but I could I could swear there's a way to auto stage. Bit more of a curve though. Oops, a bit early. <laughs> Look at this though, you see this vector? That's our rotational vector. See, now we're getting somewhere interesting. Right? 500, 600. Probably do something like that. Now it's slowing down because of wind resistance because we're in tumble. But we got our rotation up to something like 600 meters per second. It's got to go to 2,000 or thereabouts, but I think you get the idea. See the wind resistance as soon as you take off the throttle, it starts to slow us down. But yeah, this theory is still sound, just needs more thrust, that's all. That's all. Revert flight to VAB. Right, and I suppose the iterating and all that continues. So that's my plan at the moment. Millions of little stages, as many as the game will let me, potentially investigating uh, the idea of auto-staging to reduce that downtime, and because, like, if it's not clear, I haven't spelled it out explicitly, and, and I, I always come back to this, because it's, this is just how my brain works. Automation is what makes my heart pump, um, uh, which is funny, because that's exactly what it does, but that's that, I'm talking more from a passion perspective, so no pun intended. Um, and to me, the idea of coming up with a way to press the button and have this thing go straight up to orbit, it seems so feasible, seems so obvious. Um, and yet I don't, I don't know if it's sort of something people do. Anyway, but I could be wrong, I, you know, and that's part of the fun is putting your money where your mouth is. This is my theory, this is what's going on. And in five minutes after I put this video up, someone will probably go, well, this isn't actually possible what you're talking about. Um, anyway, but my request to you, dear sweat, that is watching this for some weird reason because you enjoy watching newbies. I don't want a wall of text, but if you could type uh, how I could auto stage, that would be cool. So I didn't have to have the human error of pressing spacebar too slow. Then I can get these ratios correct. Anyway, team, um, let me know if you want to see some more. Otherwise, I might just leave it there for the time being and I'll catch you guys on the next one.